Woo. I love the way Brad has woven each one of the, the stories together. But tonight's video, I was standing back there watching, and all of a sudden, I was totally thrown. In fact, I even heard some noise out here when he mentioned my favorite movie series of all time. Which, what, what did he mention? Yeah. For all of those of us SoCal people, we're all dying to get over there and see Star Wars land at Disneyland with all the cool stuff there. And you know, it's amazing how a really great story can grab you, I don't care how old you are, and grab a hold of your heart. I was talking with some of the kids at Pepperdine two weeks ago before the 4th of July, and I said, hey, what are you going to do for 4th of July? Figured, hey, we might go here to see fireworks, so we're going to do this. And they said, we're having a party. I said, awesome, where? And they told me this place that's nowhere near any fireworks are going off. I said, why are you doing it? They said, don't you know what 4th of July is? I said, yeah, Independence Day. They said, no. It is the day when our favorite new series releases the third season. Yeah. Yeah, they were so just. One of them said, we read online that they weren't, they weren't even going to make a third season. They were all nervous. And you know, you always wonder, is it going to be as good? And so here's, here's is this. Okay, I have seen some of it, and I don't want to give you a spoiler. Okay. L gets a nosebleed. That's all I can say. It's just, it is going to happen. But I, one thing you will notice when you, when you look at it, you'll go, dude, they're all taller, right? They're all looking older. Because even though we freeze frame them in series, in season one or season two, just like, I mean, okay, way date myself, but... Uh, there is, down by uh, South Coast Plaza, a big movie theater where when I was going to University of California, Irvine, I got my undergraduate degree there, my graduate degree at Pepperdine University. But when I was at UCI, Star Wars' first film came out. And we went down to this gigantic theater that seats about 3,000 people. Since then, I've heard that um, George, uh, not George Lucas, but Steven Spielberg actually would go down there and sit in the back to kind of get the reaction from people. I remember when I was introduced to this character right here. The man with the bald spot there. Yes, one, one more. Yeah, there he is. Okay, you got to understand, this was all the new technology and the cool choo-choo-choo, right? And you know, I am your father and all that routine. It was just like awesome. And this guy was funny and he was witty and he was heroic. And they kept making movies and movies and movies, and he turned into this guy. Yeah. Which, you know, it's still cool. It's like he's Han Solo grandpa version. I mean, he's just, he's still cool. But the movie maker said, oh, no, 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 this character is too important. We cannot let him go. So they did a reboot. They did a, a renewal. So it went from, go to the next slide. It went from this guy to this guy. Now, I know, I know, some go for it and some don't. But I will tell you this. I have seen a bad baton pass. There was a movie that went from this guy To this guy, yeah, I know, ah, 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 yeah. So, what we're about to watch is an extremely well done baton pass. Have we got anybody ever run a relay race in here? Any, any relay racers? Okay, some of you know the drill. Here, let's take a look at the text first. Let's just go ahead and get right into it. Because as Brad said, Elijah, everybody say Elijah, Elijah. is getting a little older, and Elijah is tired, and Elijah is worn out, and we've seen him beat the prophets of Baal, and we've seen him win a foot race with King Ahab back. We've seen him call down fire and call down rain. We've seen Elijah do awesome things. We also saw him go into kind of a real depression mode where he's like, oh, nobody loves me. I want to die. Nobody really cares. And God say, Elijah, dude, that's the Hebrew word for Elijah. 
Elijah, you've still got more work to do. But part of your work is to pass the baton. He says, I want you to go find a guy named Elisha. Everybody say Elisha. Easy way to remember which one goes first as J comes before S. I don't know. God did it in alphabetical order there. So Elijah, I want you to go find Elisha. So here's what the text says. It says, Elisha went from there and found Elijah, son of Shaphat. And he was plowing with 12 yoke of oxen. As has been mentioned, what that means is he was a very wealthy guy. He's plowing with 12 yoke of oxen. He himself was driving the 12th pair. Now what that means is he's a real wealthy guy but he's not sending out a servant to do the work. So we got a guy with a servant's heart, but we got a guy with some resources, which means he probably had some pretty good education. Keep reading. And it says, Elijah went up to him. And what does the text say he did? Threw his cloak around him. It was an important moment for him to say, you know what? I'd like to, we would say, take you under my wing. Now, I want you to freeze frame that mental Instagram of one person saying to another, here, where's my baton? One person saying to another, okay, I've been carrying this, but now, take it. And I, this is awkward, because I'm like, I need another. DJ, where's D uh, my buddy DJ, I've known for years, is here. DJ Iverson, where are you? Youth minister from New Vintage. Hey, come here, dude, come here. Yeah, just however, or vault up either way. Yeah, they, can you show them where the stairs are? Awesome. DJ, what I need you to do is I need you to hustle right up here. Man, thank you for being here. And I, and I want you to be the, um, the person I'm passing the baton to. All right, awesome. Good deal. Okay, hey, first we'll do this. Hi, DJ, where are you from? I'm from New Vintage Church in San Diego. San Diego, California. I love it. Rocket New Vintage, glad you're here. You ever been to a CIY event before? This is my first year. No way! How many first-timers do we have at CIY this year? How many people have been here at least four times at a CIY event? Awesome. Awesome. Okay, glad you're here. Do you run any track? Um, once. Once. What was it? Um, it was a bet, and I won. Oh, okay, all right. Well, come here. I'm going to ask you to face that direction. So my son Taylor, you know Taylor. Oh, yeah. My son Taylor ran track. He ran track when we lived back in Charlotte, North Carolina, and he ran track there. And I went down, DJ, one day to watch a track meet where he was running the 440 relay. Now, I'm expecting to see them kind of warming up and sprinting, but the coach had all four of them lined up just like this. And they're lined up, and he... Have you got two more? Have you got uh, yeah. two kids in a youth group? I've got, I've got my uh, associate guy and Priscilla. Awesome. Hey, uh, associate guy and Priscilla. <laughs> Sorry. What's the associate guy's name? Scotty. You should learn that. Okay, Scotty. Hey, dude. Glad you're here. Go stand in front of a uh, youth minister guy. And, uh, and your name is? Priscilla. Priscilla. I'm so glad you're here. Would you go stand in front of Scotty? Okay, let's see if we can do this. I'm going to try this here. Okay, without rehearsal. Now, come, come this way just a little bit. Back up just a little bit. All right, good, 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 good. Now, you need to be, if you take your arm like this and lean and tap, that's how far you need to be. That, that far away. Okay, awesome. Now, here's what we're going to do. Now you take your arm off the other person. All right, good deal. A little too close. All right, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to run without moving four steps at a time. So if you want to look back here, it goes like this. One, two, three, four. And on the four, I'm not going to count four. I'm just going to go one, two, three, boom. And each time we get to, to the four, you shoot your hand back. Priscilla, are you playing or paying attention? Okay, Priscilla, this is what I want you to do. I want you to... I want you to shoot your hand back every time we get to four, okay? Let's just try that. Let, let me watch you guys. Here we go. And one, two, three. One, two. Oh, see, yeah, that's it. Sorry. It's a running race, so we're going to keep going. Here we go. All right, one more time. And <clears throat> we're all going to start on the right foot here. It looks so simple on paper. All right, here we go. Ready? And one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, now, I am watching... <laughs> I am watching the track coach as he's calling it. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And this is all they're doing, only they add this. Now this time, when it hits four, get that hand, open that hand. I'm going to pop this in your hand. One, two, three. And then on four, you're going to pop it in his hand. And one, two, three, four. You're going to pop it in 
Right. All right, now, hand it all the way back here. Here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. Okay, 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 we got this. Count it really quiet under your breath. Here we go, really quiet under your breath. And one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One. All right, not bad. Not bad, not bad. Now, I want you to imagine watching this for 15 solid minutes. On your mark, get set. One, that's right, right foot, one more time. And one, two, three, four. 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 I finally went down to the coach. I can't help it. I'm that kind of dad. I just walked down to the coach and said, hey, Coach Brown. And I said, um, they're practicing. He said, yeah. I said, um, don't they spend the bulk of their time running in this race? Shouldn't, maybe, I don't know, do you have them warm up or something? He said, oh, they're already warm, they're already warm. I said, but wait, they've, they've been doing this here for like 15 minutes. And at this point, he says, stop. And he turns around. Yeah, you know you're going to get coached when he turns around. He's your Taylor's dad, aren't you? I said, yeah. He said, did you ever run the relay? I said, no. He said, I can tell. <laughs> he said, uh, here's the deal, Pastor Walling. Anybody can run. We don't lose races because we don't run well. We lose races because this is something they're not used to doing by themselves. This is something... I'm not used to doing this. It's the wind. It's the wind. It's the wind. That is exactly Satan's prayer. <laughs> no, not about this. About this. About the fact that we have an awesome auditorium full of folks who love Jesus. And Satan says that's totally cool so long as you don't do that. If he can just help us pardon me, if he can just keep us from doing that. Which, by the way, means the most important thing maybe for you and I right now to talk about is how do you do that well? (laughs) How do you do that in a way that it sticks? And how do we avoid one (laughs) of those? And we're going to have to laugh a little bit because if we think about what that actually means, it'll break our hearts. That is the sound of a, of a young person whose mom and dad are Christians, went to church, but somehow, somewhere, this never got there. And as soon as he or she is out of the house, it's like, no, 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 I don't need any of that stuff. That is the sound of somebody in your youth group who you invited and said, hey, come on, yeah. And they came a couple times, it was really fun, but then all of a sudden they started dating somebody else and before you know it, they say, no thanks. So, my natural judgmental spirit wants me to know, so whose fault is it? Who's at fault? Somebody's at fault here. (laughs) I become my grandma my sweet Grandma Satterfield, Grandma Satterfield, when she had us at the house, she would say, she lived out in the IE, but she was from Missouri, and she would say, okay, now, I heard a lot of yelling back there. Who was it? Who was it? And this is me and my sister and my brother. And, of course, we all went, ah, you know, ah, ah, ah. Somebody's at fault. My mom used to say, that's my mom. She just wants to have somebody to say, okay, you, you're going to go sit in the kitchen. That's what you're going to do. And of course, so we're all trying to shift blame. Let me be clear. There are two people involved and only two. First, the guy or gal with the baton. My responsibility, in fact, let me, let me just, let me give you one simple, well, there's really two, aren't three. Okay, there's four, but that's all we're going to do. We're stopping there. Okay, here we go. Principle number one. Go ahead and put principle number one up there, Mr. Magic PowerPoint, if you would. By the way, let's give it up for the tech crew who works hard all week long. Okay. 
I want all of the ladies to read the first line that is printed in white letters that begins with the word run. And I want you to read it good and loud. But then I want all the gentlemen to read the second line, which begins with but. No connection to the gentlemen. But here's what we're going to do. We're going to have the ladies read the first line and the guys read the second line good and loud. Principle number one for passing the baton is, ladies. Okay, just a sec. <laughs> Why is it that I can clearly hear all the ladies run the next right step? And all the guys went, but whatever. <laughs> but, but, guys, let's try a little diction. Let's just practice the guys part. Okay, we're going to say, but look, and put that k on k look, okay? But look ahead, and put the D on ahead. Here we go. One, two, three, guys. But not bad. Now let's slow it down just a little bit, guys, to make it easy for us. We'll go, but look ahead. All right, here we go. Ready? But look ahead. Oh, ladies, give them a round of applause. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. So if I'm the guy with the baton, if I'm the guy with the baton, the first thing that I need to remember is you don't stop when you're passing the baton. Now, this is this interesting thing when you're running. When you're running a relay race, you may run several steps before you get the baton in their hand. You don't run up and go, okay, cheers, here, here, take it, take it. That's not the way that works. That's the way you lose races, right? As a Christian, I don't go, okay, I become a Christian, and now I'm finding somebody to become a Christian, and so now, awesome, here, I want to hand this to you, and I'm kind of couch potatoing it with Jesus. You run... If you read back that section about Elijah, and in it, God just kept saying, Elijah, go here, Elijah, go here, Elijah, go here, Elijah, go here. And each time, Elijah was like, okay, I'll go, okay, I'll go, okay, I'll go. Elijah is a great example of a simple principle. What do I do to follow God? Run the next, ladies, right step. You don't have to say, well, I don't know what I'm going to do when I get there. Or what am I going to do when I get to college? Or what if I have this? Or what if my girlfriend this? Or what if my mother this? Stop. Just the next right step. Now, I get the feeling. Hang on, I'm going to pull over and park just a second. I get the feeling that there are some people here for whom the next right step Maybe coming and, are you doing the whistly thing? No, okay. Uh, the, the, the next right step for you, maybe tonight you saying to somebody, you know what? I don't even think I have the baton. I mean, I love going to church and all that, but I've never given my heart and life to Jesus, or I've never been baptized into Christ. I've never committed myself to him. And although this lesson is awesome about, okay, we're going to put the baton in somebody else's hand, you just need to, ladies, help me one more time, Run the... Now, for some of you, you've got the baton firmly in your hand, but how can I put this gently? You're not running. In fact, maybe at some point you've stumbled and you found yourself just kind of sitting on the track, feeling guilty or shamed. I know that we've talked already this week about coming out of the cave. And maybe your next right step is to say to somebody, look, I just, I've got to stop this or I've got to start doing this. But while you're running the next right step, gentlemen, <laughs> right, I don't run the next right step saying, it's just you and me, Jesus, you and me, Jesus, you and me, Jesus, you and me, Jesus. Because that's, that's kind of easy for us to do. I don't know, it's kind of easy for me to do. Like when the band was leading worship, and dude, are they good. I love the band. I actually, I actually am one of the preachers at the church where those guys are. And it is like, man, just every Sunday in the youth service, they just, they take the roof off. But there's a danger in that. There's a danger that I'm all about, yes, Jesus, it's you and me, and I just love you, Jesus, and you're so awesome. And God says, had you ever thought that maybe somebody else might love Jesus as well? Some of us treat Jesus like popcorn at the movies, you know? Did you ever go with a cheap friend to the movies? You know what I mean? You buy the popcorn, you buy the milk duds, you buy the big 
drink, and they're like, no, I'm fine. I don't want anything. I'm fine. They sit down at the Marvel movie, and within five minutes, they're like, can I, can I have some of your popcorn? <laughs> and right? And as a corpus, as a Christian, you say, take the whole thing. No, you're like, well, I'm, okay, one little, you, the real, the real <laughs> stingy ones are like, okay, one, two, three. <laughs> Jesus has more popcorn where this is from. Can I get an oh yeah? We don't have to worry about giving away the good stuff because he's going to continue to fill our bucket. Everybody say, I get that. So my first step is to keep running the right step, but look where. In fact, take a look at the text we just read, only I'm going to color different words colored. Watch this. Go go to the next screen. Now you guys read the orange words or the kind of peel ones. So Elijah and Elisha, son of Shaphat. He was plowing with 12 yoke of oxen, and he himself was driving the 12th pair. Elijah, hold up. How come Elijah didn't say, hey, Elisha, son of Shaphat, come come over here. (laughs) Elijah didn't do that because what was Elijah doing? He was busy. He was, he was walking with his oxen, right? Somebody say running. Oxen don't run. They're like, oh. All right, so turn around. Come back here. So Elijah is busy running his own race, and Elisha has to come up to where he is. Hold that. This means you may not find the person you're going to share Christ with at church. They probably aren't there because they don't yet know about Jesus. Which means I'm gonna have to be looking ahead at school and at work and on my sports team and in my neighborhood and maybe even in my family. I'm gonna be looking for somebody who I can bless with the best news in the world because the fact that we can go to heaven and not hell is the best news in the world. Can I get a oh yeah? Amen, amen. All right, so here we go. So I'm going to run the next right step, and then I am going to look ahead. Now I'm going to hold out the baton. Here's what, uh, number two, sorry. Here's what I cannot do. I cannot, put your hand back there again, Deej. I cannot, like, shove it, or here, just wrap your finger. I can't do that, right? That's the way your mom wants to do it. Let me show you how to do it. No, that's not the way it works. Here's the way it works. The runner here holds the baton out, and the runner there, the coach coached me on all this, has to practice feeling it, being aware of it, sensing it, grabbing it. Now, yeah, let's just go here for a minute, shall we? Let's do it. We live in a world that doesn't, in some quarters, have much respect for Jesus. Uh, Jesus' name will be mocked. Uh, There are going to be whole television MCs who will go on rants about how stupid it is to believe the Bible or to believe in Christ. And sometimes, as some of our churches are struggling, we may try and think up ways to trick people into taking this, you know? Hey, do you like donuts? Sure. Hey, our church has donuts. And before you know it, I've got him coming to church because we got donuts. Now, I suppose maybe one... T- I didn't mean anything by the donut thing. I I, I, I feel bad about that. No, DJ's a friend. DJ's a friend. I should have said you like celery. All right, so I'm, I'm, I'm handing, I'm handing off, I'm handing off the baton. And when I hand off the baton, I don't try and trick him. You're not getting this. Um, We had a dachshund. The dachshund's name was uh, Rusty. And make a long story short, Rusty was the most dumb dog we ever had. Why do I think Rusty was dumb? What? <clears throat> because she constantly tried to run away. We fed her, we cared for her. She slept in the bed with my kids. They loved her. Why would you run away from that house, okay? Two, when she ran away, she would never remember where we lived. And three, when she ran away and you called her name, she did not know her own name. This after six years of being our dog. Rusty, 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 Rusty. She's like, ah, freedom, ah, right? (laughs) The one word that Rusty knew was treat. (laughs) 
if you said treat, she's like, what? We should have named her treat. That makes more sense, right? So imagine my horror on a Saturday morning when there's some construction going on in our neighborhood, big trucks coming and going. There's a ring at the doorbell. Some FedEx man or something is there. My youngest son goes down, opens the door to take the package. Rusty, door open, and out. Runs through the legs of the FedEx man and down the steps. My young son freaks because of all the trucks, because Rusty is running across our front lawn for the street. Dad, Rusty, I am upstairs. I am, don't even have shoes on, but I'm like, what? I'm going running downstairs because my wife loved the dog. There would be no explaining, well, I was busy. So I just like, <laughs> I, I'm running downstairs. I get downstairs and I grab the thing that we kept by the front door for just this purpose. I grab a bag of treats and I grab Rusty's leash and I go running down the front steps. I didn't even have a shirt on and this is not meant for public consumption. <laughs> and I, I... I am, I am running with my shorts, you know, and, and, and I'm running, Rusty, Rusty, I mean, treat, treat. Rusty stops at the edge of our yard when she hears treat and looks back. And you can see in her little dachshund eyes, she's weighing it. Treat, freedom, uh, treat, freedom, treat, 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 look, 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 look. Rusty slowly turns towards me, yes, <laughs> yes, treat. It's a good girl. Treat, come here. Treat, look at the treat. I take one out of the bag. Smell it. Treat, treat, treat. She slowly comes up. And when she gets right there, treat, I take the leash. Boom. You get yourself in this house. Get in here. When I call you, you come. You get, your, you get yourself in here. <clears throat> this is not a good model for evangelism. Because if I'm not careful, I won't hold the baton out in faith. I'll hold the baton out thinking it's my responsibility to make him take it. I'll hold the baton out thinking it's my responsibility to talk him into taking it. I'll hold the baton out thinking, oh, I've got to convince her. No, I don't. God's in charge of that. Can I get a oh yeah? Oh, yeah. Do you know what? Do you know what my responsibility is? Get yourself up there. You know what my responsibility is? It is to run the next right step, but... And then everybody say, hold out the baton in faith. Hold out the baton in faith. Now, at this point, the discussion shifts from the one that has the baton to the one that might be accepting the baton. Because in the story, here, let's put up the text and look, what, look at what happens next. The scripture says, Elisha then left his oxen and ran after Elijah. So Elijah comes up throws the cloak. Hey, buddy, you want to be my disciple? Yeah, and he runs, but then he says this. Can I get all the adults to read the, um, the orangish kind of words? Here we go, adults. Let me... He said... I know, all you parents that just read that, doesn't that make you feel so good? Elisha wasn't like, yes, I want to follow Yahweh. Mom, mom, right? He wants to hug mom and hug dad, which I would think that's a totally reasonable thing. But look at the next verse. Look at what Elijah says back to him. Take a look at this. Elijah says to him, well, then go back. What have I done to you? As if to say, excuse me, if you don't want this, friend, no worries. No worries. It's really interesting to me that Elijah Let's Elisha wrestle with this. You can't hold the baton while your hand is full. You got it. Well, here, let's look. imagine you're practicing running, and so you got that in your hand, and we're going to try this. Here we go. One, two, three, four. You need to take this when I give it to you. No, no, no. Holding that. There we go. Yeah, that's the point. And one, two, three, four. One, two. Okay. Yeah, with a pinky. A p and not bad with a pinky. But I think you might, you, you might lose it. Now, if you also brought a cutie in the same hand, please. Okay, good. Well, actually, it's 12 yoke of oxen, two cuties. There we go. All right, in the same hand. All right, good. Now, his chances are somewhere around zero. I'm going to really do it. Here we go. Ready? And one, two, three, four. One, four, four, four. Okay, all right, there we go. Now, Elisha does an amazing thing. This is what he does. The scripture says 
that he goes and he, he, he goes to the next slide is what he does. And then he skips the slide and goes to one more slide. Take the baton because you have an empty hand and this is what he does. You guys, my fault, you guys read the orange. So Elisha left him and went back. He and and he to cook the meat and he okay all right let's get through this fast on your mark get set this guy impresses me he says you know what lay it all down Deej I'm willing to let go of the things that I have held on to <clears throat> if you've never given your heart and life to Christ you may not be holding the baton of Christ, but you're holding something. You're holding on to, I don't know, security because you're smart. I'll get a great job. I'll do good. Security because you're handsome or cute. People love me. Security because you're funny. Security because you're good at sports. Security because your parents are wealthy. Security because, hey, man, I'm the captain of my team. Or security because I am such a good drawer, I'm going to become an architect. Fill in the blank. Whatever security because I'm an American, whatever it is that you're, that you're hanging on to, okay? Because we all, before Jesus, we hung on to something. I lovingly tell you, you can't say, great, I'm going to hold all this stuff and hold Jesus. What I'm going to do, now, oh, sorry, I'm going to sing the frozen song. How about just say the three words, let it go, because that's what it means to become a Christian. Now, I'm going to suggest that there's some of you tonight, because we're about to wrap up, that are going to say, but if I let it go, what's going to go in its place? A young lady came up to me after a discussion like this and said, can I talk with you? My my boyfriend's not a Christian. We've been doing some things that I know aren't right. But I'm afraid if I stop, if I let it go, that he'll leave me. And I said, well, chances are he might. I don't know. But I do know this. If you are willing to let go of anything, that is not godly, if you're willing to let go and take hold instead to the Lord Jesus Christ, you will never regret that choice. You will never regret that choice. All right, line it up, line it up, line it up. Here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. Here we go. All right, so number one, I got to run the next right step and look ahead. Number two, I got to, here we go, hold out the baton. Number three, he's going to empty his hand so that he can then pass the baton. Go ahead if you would. And here's the great news. By the way, I think this is really, freeze right there. I think this is really cool. Did you say this was your associate youth ministry yeah. guy? Yep. So you're mentoring him in youth ministry? Yes. How long has he been part of your group? Uh, about two years. About two years. years. Praise, praise God for that. <laughs> So we are actually seeing a bona fide, real-life baton pass moment. But here's the cool thing. The Bible says that when Elisha, if you will, took the baton, when Elisha said, okay, look at this verse. It says that he came and he, do you see what he did? He walked, one more slide, maybe, hopefully. He walked with, ah, oop, keep going, sorry. One more time, never forget you, don't run alone, and one more slide, and we'll all read it together because it's short. Then he set out to follow Elisha. Now back up one slide, because you don't walk the Christian walk alone. Jesus does not call us to be the Lone Ranger. Jesus does not call us to be, you know, I don't need anybody. Instead, he puts us in this line. It's called community. It's called Christ Church. It's a line in which we're going to do this one last time. Here we go. Ready? On your mark, get set. One, two, three. In which at the same time we are running together. Keep going. We are running together. That baton is continuing to be passed. Because by the way, the young lady in front of Scotty, 
is a student who is about to commit. What ministry was it you said uh, she was going to be? Fellowship of Christian Athletes. She was, she's about to become a leader in Fellowship of Christian Athletes. <laughs> This is the most awesome picture of a holy parade. And interestingly enough, you kind of made me feel bad earlier this evening, Deej, when you said, hey, I want you to meet this guy who's speaking tonight to your youth group. When did you first hear me speak? Um, when I was in junior high, we used to watch our VHS tapes. I am so totally and completely humbled to stand here and realize that maybe just a little bit, I got to be a part of something that is continuing. And remember what I told you when we started tonight? That Satan's one goal, one goal is to make sure that this, pass it to him, doesn't happen. So he's going to tempt, and he's going to guard, and he's going to distract, and he's going to say, DJ, you got other things to do. And, you know, Scotty's man, he's just, I don't even just know if he's going to, he's really going to get it. In fact, Satan's best line is, you know what, why don't you do that next week? Yeah. So I'm going to describe somebody. Close your eyes, please. Would you? Some already did that earlier in the lesson. Just join them and close, close your eyes for just, for just a moment. Okay, got your eyes closed. I want you to think about a person who you know who's not involved in fellowship with other Christians. Maybe once upon a time they were a Christian, but they've, they've walked away from it. Maybe they've never given their heart and life to Christ. You know them. You care about them. And if somebody said, when are you going to say to them, Hey man, I, I love you too much. I care too much about you, friend. Not to say, I, I, man, I've got something I've got to share. Will it be next week? Will it be next month? Are they in this room with you? Open your eyes. Now here's the good news. We have been given today. We've been given today and we've been given technology. Some of you, I believe, when this lesson's over and you get in your small groups in just a few minutes, need to be doing some texting. Not just friends back home, not just checking out Facebook, but rather texting somebody who you know who needs to get this. And texting them and saying, man, when, when can we get together next week? I, I, I want to buy you lunch or I want to get together, I want to get a cup of coffee. Hey, man, when can we meet at fill in the blank, Right? And when they say, well, I don't know why, because, man, I've got something I've got to tell you. And they're going to go, oh, really, what? Uh, I can't tell you now, because <laughs> the guy told me I couldn't, so I can't tell you now. Um, but I, but I, but I want to tell you. I wonder what would happen if, say, out of the 1,900 of us in this room, say just a half, say like 1,000 or so, say say 950 or something, decided to just hold it out, offer it. I wonder, I wonder if heaven would just explode with celebration because we were willing to continue that baton pass. We were willing to say, I'm not going to keep it and call it mine. I've got to give away because the best news in the world is way too good for us to keep secret. And the whole group said, give these guys a round of applause for me, would you? Thank you. Scotty, come here. Lord bless you. Thank you. Thank you. So you guys already wrote some things on a, on a cart, and I've got to finish, but I've got to write this first. Because... I've got to tell you about my, my name on a card. It's Tom. Um, whew, let me see if I can get through this fast. 
<clears throat> Tom lived out in the Inland Empire and um, worked uh, on an orange grove out there. In fact, he was a, like a foreman of this orange grove. Tom was married, and he met a guy named Hubert. Hubert was a Spanish teacher and a tennis coach, and Tom enjoyed playing tennis, and so they started playing tennis a little bit, and, and Hubert started talking to Tom about Jesus. Hubert found out that Tom had, you know, gone to church and kind of made kind of sort of a commitment, but not, not a deep one. But he found out that Tom was an amazing relational purchase person, and Hubert finally said, Tom, I think maybe you might be cut out to be a pastor. And Tom said, no way. He said, no, really. So he starts this conversation. And every time they're together, he's saying, I'm praying for you, Tom. I'm praying for you. And at one point he came out because there was a group that was wanting to start a church and they were looking for somebody that could help them start it. He and Tom had been studying the Bible together. He came and Tom was on a ladder. I love this story. He was on a ladder up in the tree picking oranges. Tom, I need to talk to you about something. He said, Hugh, I can't. We've got to get this done. Please, Tom, it's important. Yeah, this is important. You want to talk, come up and help. So Hubert got a ladder and leaned the ladder into the tree on the other side and climbed up in it. Started helping Tom pick oranges. And while he did, he told Tom of this group and how prayer after prayer had brought Tom's name back to Hubert's mind. And Hugh said, will you go home and talk to Mel, his wife? Tom agreed to, prayed about it, thought about it, talked to his wife about it. The two of them wrestled with it. They had two kids. All of a sudden, they were going to leave a job that was secure to go help this new church. God worked in Tom's heart. Tom took the baton. Tom went to his owner, the owner of the, uh, the Orange Grove, and Tom said, look, Mr. Nickerson, it's been an honor to work for you, but I think I'm supposed to be a minister. Lee Nickerson said to him, hey, listen, I tell you what I'll do. You go preach on the weekends. That's totally cool with me. Just be my foreman during the week. Tom, my kids don't care a thing about this. I'm old. If you will stay, I will give you the growth. Now, this is dozens of acres in Redlands, California. This is like a mint today. Tom said, I'm sorry, Mr. Nickerson. I, I can't. I've got to give everything to this. Tom and Mildred left the grove, began to work in a church, the little Redlands Church of Christ. It grew I have no idea how many people Tom baptized into Christ. Their two older kids grew up, and then when, when his wife was 40, all of a sudden, she was pregnant. And everybody at the church, like, call them Abraham and Sarah, you know? I mean, like, whoa! Their kids were 20 and 18, and she's pregnant. And Tom says, well, I guess, you know, God wants us to do something. The kid was born, and Tom gave this boy his first name but for the boy's middle name he loved Mr. Nickerson so he gave him the middle name Lee it's me Tom was my dad he passed away when I was 21 years old I don't know if they can see from heaven or not but I cannot walk off this stage without telling you that the only reason I've been able to hand the baton to others is because somebody loved me and put it firmly in my hand. That happened to be my dad. And on the other side of him was a Spanish teacher who put it into his hand. I wish I knew all the story all the way back, I don't. But the most important part of the story is what's gonna happen ahead. And that, my young friends, is your choice. Bow your head.